Awesome. Hi, everybody. This is Ashley with the Science of Intuition. This is Mark. Mark, can you please tell us who you are and what you do? When I got a yes from you, I can tell you that I was like, I, like if you can imagine Dorothy clicking her heels, I was so excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me on. I'm Mark Lanehart, and I, I go by the name of the Intuitive Prospector. And what that is, it's I work with people all around the world uh, to help them spiritually prospect for their own spiritual goals. Because I found it's different for everybody, whether it's a belief system where you live in the world, uh, maybe you don't have a belief system. And so I do a, a lot of work uh, inspiring, getting people to think outside the box, to maybe live again, to go through and embrace the grieving process of losing a loved one, because that's something that I've endured in my journey. And really just about looking at life um, in the what I call the magic of the moment and finding uh, the pathways, the many pathways of living life, uh, the different things that come into our journey, whether it's a relationship, a new baby, uh, whether it's a, a, a marriage, uh, a new job, a new house, and really just uh, prospecting. The concept of prospecting means that you have to put in the work yourself, just like a prospector back in the days of old would have to go out and he would have to search and he would have to dig and he'd have to pan for that gold that he's searching for. And so that's the concept of what I help people, um, whether it's through my radio show, whether it's through my Facebook show, whether it's being through a writer, whether it's uh, doing a workshop, getting out in nature and doing a, a Forest Friday hike or a Saturday snowshoe. It's about connection. It's about connection to others, connection to ourselves, connection to the world around us. And uh, I love what I do. And uh, that wasn't always the case, but um, it's, it's really what I call spiritual awesomeness. I love that, um, that you use the word prospect because, because it's such an important um, realization that um, I was just speaking with somebody about spiritual awakenings. Like it's not always this lightning bolt that occurs. It's, it's sometimes it's a journey and prospecting and really doing the work and understanding that you can trust yourself and your intuition to lead you in the right place is the journey. And I think that the word prospect is just so perfect for people to grasp that you are prospecting for gold and the gold is the best life that you can have. Exactly. And I'll be honest with you, Ashley, when I first started down this journey about, oh, 12 years ago, when I first came up, I don't know if I actually came up with the name. I think the, the name was actually presented to me from the spirit world and, and those that are in the spirit world that helped guide me because I was like, that's a really stupid name. <laughs> they, they, I love they, it. They, they took me to a place of don't judge, don't have opinion about it. Look at the deeper meaning of what the prospector entails because it really is a lot about putting in your own hard work, whether it's psychic, mediumship, intuition, spirituality, healing, uh, meditation, mindfulness, metaphysics, what have you. You've got to put the work in it because it's your journey, nobody else's. And the prospector is all about self journey. And when I started to look at that deeper meaning of, okay, what is the intuitive prospector? And I don't really want to call myself that. Um, then I started to realize that, yeah, it's helping other people search and explore the mind, body, spirit. But no, you have to have the right equipment. You have to have the right mindset. You got to go out. You got to work hard for what you want because it really is the universal law of what you put in, you get out. It's not just delivered like Amazon where it drives <laughs> right. the front door, right? Um, so it took, it took me a few years to really come to terms with that concept of the intuitive prospector. And, you know, working as a spiritual medium, working as a psychic, working with the intuition and the awareness. And it, there was probably about two years of self-reflection and acceptance. And I believe everybody goes through that. When you've had a shakening that causes that awakening, it doesn't happen overnight. And it literally is a, is a, a path that isn't a straight line, something I just mm -hmm. talked about, that the path and the, the spiral. And we come back at certain points in our life and certain people in such a certain situations. And we revisit that lesson because the lesson repeats until it completes mm -hmm. and we resist. And what we resist usually persists is what I found in the, uh, the yin and the yang of spiritualism. So um, now I fully embrace who I am. I embrace the intuitive prospector. I love what I do. I love helping people, connecting to people, uh, whether it's through radio or through my shows or one-on-one -on -one reading or an interview like this. Uh, and I know we're going to be talking about intuition as well, which I call the true language of the soul and understanding what language your soul is speaking to you. And that's where, you know, I come 
away with intuition as far as my understanding of intuition. Yeah, I like to say it's the inner guidance system. It's like the alert system of what your your whole soul is telling you. It's it's a built-in system that is the foundation of like using your head, but your your heart takes over. So it's um, just an interesting view of things. So how did you um, discover your intu intuition, and how did you realize like? you can use it because a lot of people don't realize that everybody has it and it's a matter of utilizing it or completely ignoring it and being in distress or disease. Yeah. Yeah. Disease. So a uh, disease or disease from, you know, I like to say human being, are we just human beings going about life without paying attention, having the, the blinders on some people are like that. You re, re know people in life that are like that. But when you have that awakening, and usually I found it's through some sort of major shaking, and we've all had a shaking of some sort, we all have a story to tell. When the blinders come off and the awakening begins, uh, for me, that's where the intuition really starts to kick in because you're presented with different uh, people, opportunities, experiences, choices, and you have a ch choice, your greatest power here on earth while you're here is free will and choice. And you have this choice to choose. Some people choose not to embrace their intuition. I do believe, and I do feel it is a natural born thing to come to this physical planet in the physical body and have all these experiences. And you've got to give some tools. You've got to have some tools. You know, it's like, for example, if you and I decided to go up to the mountains and go camping, there's a few necessities that we might want to bring on our trip. You know, <laughs> clothing, shelter, food, water. The spiritual journey is very much the same way. And intuition is one of those things that you bring with you. And I believe everybody can use their intuition. They can use their awareness. I got into intuition not um, by choosing to. I actually was taking my graduate studies here in Seattle at the University of Washington. And the course was focused in on um, the graduate program was sports medicine and human performance. Had nothing to do with spiritualism. Not psychic, not mediumship, nothing. Here. But, Here's something for you. I have a degree in kinesiology, study of human movement. <laughs> human movement, yeah. And I, do, and I do qi gong, which is the energy of moving your energy. If, if qi is your energy, gong is the study of. Mm -hmm. when, I was in the, when I was in my graduate studies, we had a semester focused in on visualization, manifestation, and meditation for the professional athlete. Yep. Nothing to do with spiritualism or you know, intuition or awareness. But we spent the whole semester doing different modalities and exercises in meditation and visualization and manifesting what we want. And that really opened the door for me. And I, I, was, I was in my 30s uh, when that started. So it's been a while now, but the journey opened up there. And I didn't anticipate it to be talking to you today on an interview about intuition. I, you, know, you know, it's just a good example. You don't know where life's going to take you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to enjoy the ride and be a big wave surfer because the waves of change will always come your way. And you can decide to get beat up by them or you can grab a big surfboard and be a big wave surfer and get on them and enjoy the, the changes that do come your way. And so intuition is where that really started to open up for me. And it's like learning a new language. It's like if you don't know Spanish, you don't know Italian, uh, you don't know Chinese, you have to apply and start to learn uh, a language. And intuition is very much the same way because it's based on, you know, it's based on your feelings. It's based on, um, you know, the reasoning mind wants to say, well, your feelings shouldn't be telling you that. The mind, you listen to the mind up here versus that intuition is a feeling. It's a knowingness. And it's very similar, like you said earlier, the radar system of the human body, the human uh, journey, just like we are at an airport and we have, you know, radar that sees planes that are 10 miles out. Believe it or not, a lot of the science comes from the human uh, perspective and is designed after the human experiences. And so radar is, is very similar to your solar plexus, your own psychic area of yep. knowingness and intuition and awareness. That's awesome because I also um, was just speaking about um, how um, visualization and activation of like literal thoughts in your head, like uh, Olympic trainers teach people to activate their body to have the same feeling, the same knowing of they're going to win and brain mapping it and they actually win. And it's all being like science is actually catching up to these actual processes of 
visualization, meditation, and knowing that you, you know you're right, you just can't prove it. Well, now they're proving it. So it's really interesting that you brought that up because I literally was just talking about that, I think, last week. That's so funny. Yeah, and you, you fall into the pseudoscience of things. Uh, you, you know, pseudoscience is you can't prove it, but you can't disprove it either. And now science and spiritualism and technology and consciousness are all starting to shake hands and have a better, broader understanding of how this supercomputer up here can really apply to your external uh, environment and what you do, with, whether it's in sports, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your love life, uh, and having a deeper understanding of those you know, vibrations. I always think of Nikola Tesla when he says, if you want to unlock the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, everything mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's the law. I mean, it's like, I was just talking to somebody about this too. It's like, it's gravity, but it just cause you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there. And I think that's the biggest thing that people have the problem of is that lovely turn of letting go is that they can't because they can't trust themselves because they can't physically be proved like to prove it that they, they are right and they need to get some sort of validation. And that's why I love using the science of it to show people like, hello, like this is real. This is not a big thing. <laughs> I'm a, I like to say that I'm a British trained medium. So I go to England every year for the last five years. I've been studying at a college called Arthur Finley College. Oh yeah. And we do a lot of studies when we're there. I, I've been in a few classes where we've done brain mapping and looked at the power of the brain when it's in full meditation or mm -hmm. it's in full prayer or when a medium's working connect into an unseen world. And a lot of times when people come to me and ask me about mediumship or awareness or intuition or psychic abilities, I say a lot of times it's like the wind. We could look, you and I could look out and Blake could look out with us and we could look out the window and agree that um, the wind moves the trees as, you know, the, the laws of physics as we know it today would state that we agree that the, the wind moves the trees, but we don't see the wind with our physical eye. We see the effects of the wind. Mm -hmm. the Love that. That. So when you move into the unseen world, the spiritual world, those that are no longer here, uh, just maybe an impression you have or a thought you have of somebody, it's that spiritual wind that impacts the physical world. We just don't get to see it with these guys. We get to see it more with the third eye guy. Or you feel it, which is the largest organ on the body is the skin, is the ability to feel it. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes from Charlie Chaplin, who was hanging here in my studio as a reminder, is that we think too much and we feel too little. And there's a lot of truth in that. And I think as we move forward into the future, science and spirituality really shaking hands embrace, um, embrace the uh, findings of that unseen world. Um, very similar to telephones. A lot of people don't realize that the telephone was, the concepts were first created to talk to those in the, in the spirit world those that are dead, not those that are alive. So <laughs> I love that. It's such a good point about wind. I mean, it's such a simplistic concept, but a lot of people just don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always been my approach in spiritualism is really try to put it in layman's terms. Cause I, I wasn't always, you know, some people say they were born with this gift and I believe that you are, but I, for me, it laid dormant for several, several years. And now as now that it's no longer dormant and fully alive and awake and, uh, you know, in the journey, uh, it's a lifelong process that continues on until you transition back or what we say decarnate back into the uh, etheric spiritual world. Um, very similar to just different matters of water. You know, I was talking about this on my show today. Uh, you know, we don't think about, I'm, I'm just looking at Blake here and, um, you know, he want, it, for a, a moment in time, he was breathing liquid in, mm -hmm. in, in the stomach, right? He was yep. breathing like being underwater and now he's breathing air. So there are different elements and there's different vibrations of our journey, just like water can go to steam and then can go to ice and then it can go to rain. But at the end, all of the rivers return back to the ocean, whatever form they're in. And that's my journey. That's how I kind of describe the circle of life and people that are with us right now, people that we can't see, but we can feel um, people that are just a thought away. And that for me is really the spiritual path. That's such a beautiful way to put it. I love that. And it makes so, so much sense for people who still might have some sort of self doubt. I think it's just, it makes it a very tangible idea. Yeah. Self doubt's going to be part of the journey because of this guy, the ego mind up here. Yep. So I always tell people, you know, I'm getting ready for an event this weekend and I'm sure that there'll be a few skeptics in the crowd. And I tell people it's healthy to be skeptical, the challenge uh, and, and let the, the spirit world and the intelligence of the spirit world 
show you and prove to you that it is a real place where people really move forward. Uh, some people would say when you die that that's the end. Uh, I don't use, I don't like to use the words death and dying because it does signify an end. I, I use the words transitioning or passing on or moving over or returning home uh, just for the fact that, you know, it's um, it's proven to me many times that the spirit world is very much real with the amount of messages and readings I've done over the years and the evidence that comes through uh, shows me that it's, it's definitely a real place. Oh, for sure. I um I get proven all the time by spirit because my son is very, um, my, my other son, Dylan, he um, talks to little Indians that we live on an Indian burial ground and he plays with them all the time. And at first my in-laws thought I was nuts, but then once they realized like what was going on, they're like, Oh my God. I was like, yeah, it's like, it's real. Like if they're not here physically, you can't see them, but the energy is there. And so it's just, it's just a way, a perspective uh, and getting the notification and being willing to receive that notification that things are occurring that you just might not be aware of. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and especially if it's land or objects, psychometry and, and, and how the ability of land, <coughs> to hold, uh, you can hold residual energy. Uh, just like in your house, if you walk a, a certain pattern for 30 years in your house, that's going to hold residual energy. And land, especially in Native American cultures, um, I'm fascinated with the Native American philosophy. I do, I do a lot of studies with Native American uh, drumming when we're out in nature and different exercises. Mm -hmm. And the land can hold a lot of um, uh, different type of residual energy. Now, that's different than intelligent energy because intelligent energy will then communicate with you and have a conversation. Mm -hmm versus more of like just a record playing over history and you tune mm -hmm. into different vibrational songs over time and you're like, oh, I saw a ghost, but the ghost isn't there to scare you or, you know, uh, possess your body. It's just a residual energy that you're capturing. So Makes sense. Uh, yeah, just teaching people that, you know, that, you know, I have kind of got a battle against Hollywood sometimes with the movies that come out and the fear, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the spirit world wanting to possess you and, and right. you know, have that, you know, in my journey as a, as a spiritualist, I haven't had that experience. Um, not to say that it doesn't happen. I just haven't had that experience and I haven't seen anybody um, have that experience. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of like, you know, even Stephen King, when he wrote The Shining, he based it off the story of the uh, Stanley Hotel in Colorado. Mm -hmm. so I don't realize that the hotel has a lot of interactions because it's actually built on limestone. Right. And the limestone holds that energy. Mm -hmm. um, very similar to when I was in the Coast Guard, my first station down in Oahu, Washington, called the Graveyard of the Pacific. The the water in the ocean, how it hits the cliffs, mm -hmm. holds that energy. And we always had a lady in white. In fact, Ghost Adventures was just down there doing a four part series, and they they actually picked up on the lady in white, Mary, that we would all talk about. And um, this is back in 1993, so this wow. is when I was in there. So. You know, it's cool to see TV kind of catch up with some right. of the things you're talking about in 1993. <laughs> um, you know, because, again, time is an illusion, and mm -hmm. we're the only species that measures life by time. So right. um, it's a very interesting concept. I love that. Well, Mark, I so appreciate you, and I could chat with you for, for another hour if, if time allowed us to. I, I really just love what you're doing and how you approach things and use – use your truth and, and your journey to let people shine through. I think it's so important that people know that it's not necessarily a lightning strike, that you got to get the tools. And I think it's so important that we broadcast that message to people. Yeah. And I, and I would just remind people to have trust, to have patience. Two of the pillars that I teach on spiritual development is trust and patience. Uh, get away from the self-sabotage of your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that can be, uh, very uh, detrimental to your spiritual path, uh, awakening. But I also tell people to believe it, and then you start to see it. Then achieve mm -hmm. it. talk about seeing it first. I actually teach opposite, and to live your authentic self. Believe it, see it, achieve it, and take a leap of faith. Because Rumi talks about all the time, leap without feet. And sometimes that's a, that's a hard place to be. Or, or hold on and get dragged or let go and be free. The choice is always your own. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I, I bring a lot of my teachings and a lot of my interactions with people is based on those uh, spiritual concepts. And again, find the magic in the moment because today is all you have. You can't do anything about the past, even though your memories make your past real mm -hmm. and your imagination makes your future real. Neither one is actually uh, measurable or um, can go back and change right. uh, because 
it's either already happened or it hasn't happened yet. So there's a lot of finding the magic in the moment for your own spiritual journey. I love that. Well, Mark, let people know where they can find you. I want to make sure that people can um, get in touch with your shows. I know your Facebook show and your radio show. I want to make sure that they know where to get you. So the first place would be marklanehart.com. You can internet search the Intuitive Prospector. That's kind of your one-stop shop for all the you can find me Monday mornings on Facebook Live through the Intuitive Prospector page, and that's called Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, and it's an inspirational show to get you inspired for the week ahead. And then you can find me every Wisdom Wednesday over on Inspired Living Radio, which is my internet-based show at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's a live show, and it goes to the podcast Encore uh, format. And we're going into our fourth season, so we've been on the air for a while, and we have a lot of great uh, topics, guests. Um, we covered a lot in, in almost four years of doing Inspired Living Radio. So it would be to go to YouTube and get on my YouTube Soul Adventures Library, uh, where there's over 200-plus videos of hikes, dives, Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, Inspired Living Radio, and just help you get on a path of exploration and discovery through mind, body, and spirit for your own journey. I love it. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'm so excited to be able to share this interview with everyone. Well, I appreciate your time, and thank you so much for having me on. And uh, uh, Dare to Dream, Dare to Explore, Dare to Live is my tagline. And that's what <laughs> Absolutely. Both you and Blake. So. Well, um, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.